If you imitate the desire of someone else, you admire that someone else, or that someone else may be your best friend. But as soon as you both desire the same object, and the objects really desirable exist only in one, therefore they have to fight. The theatrical situation par excellence is a situation of two people desiring the same object because they designate that object to each other. Once the imitated subject realizes he is imitated, this reinforces his desire. He said, I certainly selected the right object. Therefore, he's my enemy. People polarize around objects of desire. And this can be regarded as true even for food, for shelter, for places where you can live and so forth. So you can be sure that the human population in prehistorical time gathered around the same places because they were desirable, because there was water there and so forth. And <clears throat> they were united by that same desire and they were separated because very often there was not enough of whatever was needed, water, shelter, food, and they started to fight. I don't think we should say man is so bad, you know, that he would always fight with his fellow man, even when he associates, the people he associates most closely with are the people he fight most, most uh, often with. They do because they are both moving toward the same thing. And these things are never in sufficient number. Or even if they are, you tend to trust your model All right. because you admire him. So you say he's seen in the object something more than I saw, and therefore I must follow him more than ever. And this works both ways as the one who desires first is imitated in his desire, he's confirmed in that desire. But the conflictual situation is all over the place, it's coming from everywhere. Right. And people imitate each other in their desire, but they also imitate each other in their dislikes, I just said. And therefore, when you have a conflict which is particularly visible in obvious and so forth, there will be a tendency for the neighbors of the people concerned to move with the stronger of the two, the most convincing of the two, and be on his side against the other one. And when you have a second one, you have a third one, a fourth one, it becomes easier and easier. And the mimetic, because all this is always mimetic, imitation of friendship, imitation of desire, and imitation of conflict. So, if it is so, there should not be any human society. It should be impossible. There is conflict all the time. It is when people imitate no longer the choice of uh, opponent, but also what they feel about everything. And uh, they are all going to gather against the same opponent. If one really feels convinced that one of the people there is more guilty than the other one, the notion of guilt will appear in the collective uh, interplay of these people. And as soon as this happens, you know, it gathers speeds and ultimately one victim must be killed or driven out or otherwise uh, gotten rid of. And this is what I call, this, not I, but everybody calls the scapegoat. The word scapegoat is, uh, comes from the Bible, the Tyndale translation of the Bible in English. In most European languages, they say emissary goat, emissary victim, mm -hmm. victim who is sent out of the community or who is killed, you see. But that's when everybody agrees that there must be one who is more of a culprit than the others. 
Therefore, they unite against that one. 